Hey family, Reverend Russ back again with another uh, ministry pivot. Super excited you decided to join me. Thank you uh, for joining me. Thank you for uh, subscribing, for liking, for sharing. Uh, super excited about all that is going on in the life of ministry pivot. Also excited to hear about how you all are encouraged uh, by these conversations and these pivots. And don't forget about the five minute pivots as well. Uh, and of course the articles. Uh, today, I'm super excited. I have my brother, I have my friend, uh, Reverend Doctor. Just joking, he's not Reverend Doctor, I'm saying that for him so he can laugh. Uh, but uh, my brother, uh, Minister Joshua Jenkins, uh, he is at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden out here. He is uh, a pastor's son. He is a husband. He is a dad. He is a friend beloved. He is also an entrepreneur. In this pivot, we talk about so many things from being a, a preacher's kid to serving in church to, to being able to pivot uh, how you serve in church to being able to pivot how you serve the Lord in light of uh, what other people may think about what you should do. Uh, it, it was such a rich conversation. I will tell you, though, uh, that Joshua gets to know him. He, uh, of course, uh, is, is, is a pastor's son, but he is more uh, than just that. And that, that's an awesome title by itself. But he is uh, also an entrepreneur. He is also uh, a business leader, a thought leader. Uh, and, and he's uh, started several businesses. And we're going to talk about those and not just about him getting in, but how he's also encouraged others to get in. Uh, and so again, don't forget to like, to comment, to share, to subscribe. Uh, but let's go now to my conversation uh, with Joshua. Reverend Josh, man, super excited to have you with me on Ministry Pivot, man. Thank you uh, for saying yes to be on uh, Ministry Pivot. Super excited to have you with us today. Yes, yes. I'm excited to be here to pivot with my big bro, with my bro, the Reverend Doctor. I'm right. so excited to be here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, Reverend Reverend Josh, man, let me, let me, let me, and I know I'm just going to say Josh after a while, I know you don't, you know, ordained and all that, but you, my guy, you Reverend, I, I've seen you minister in several uh, spaces uh, at your church, of course. Um, I, I talked a little bit in the intro about kind of who you were, but uh, I, I really want, if you can, to share with those who are watching, those who are listening, don't forget if you're watching, if you're listening, or wherever you are, there's show notes. So some of the things that we say on today or tonight, whenever you're listening, you'll be able to download. Uh, but but Reverend Josh, man, I, I really want you uh, to share a little bit about uh, you uh, are, are, are at First Baptist of Glen Arden. You are a PK. Uh, you are a entrepreneur. You are a husband. You are a dad. Uh, you do so many different things. Uh, so for those that have not heard uh, about kind of the stuff that you're doing, I, I, we're going to walk through several of those pivots today. But the okay. first one that I want to hit, if you wouldn't mind, man, it, is to just share a little bit about kind of your background, but also a little bit about kind of what it looks like or what it feels like to be a PK, because uh, uh, you are a preacher's kid and you're not just any preacher's kid. Uh, shout out. Uh, Pastor Jenkins, uh, y'all a pretty big <laughs> deal over there. Uh, and so uh, uh, let let let's let's kind of hear a little bit about that, if you wouldn't mind, man. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm Josh Jenkins, Pastor John Jenkins, First Baptist Church of Arden. Uh, I'm the I'm one of six. I'm the second oldest. I'm, I have a it's three it's three girls, three boys, and it goes girl boy, girl boy, girl boy. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, right? Uh, <laughs> so me and my sister are almost two years apart. Um, my older sister and then um, my younger sister after me, we're about three years. And then me and Jimmy, who a lot of people know from us doing the movies and stuff, we're about set where me and Jimmy are seven years apart. Wow. Um, so, yeah. And then, you know, my baby sister, my baby brother, um, et cetera. So uh, my parents, you know, definitely uh, believed in the um, uh, be fruitful and multiply because they definitely yeah. did that. Uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, so I'm a you know being a PK growing up in a, as a PK as I'm not just gonna say PK, I'm gonna say from being a PK of Pastor John K Jenkins and First Lady Trina Jenkins. Um, yeah. I, I I think that um, you know one thing that I can say about my parents is um, that I didn't grow up being treated from them like I was a PK. They they treated okay. me they treated me. Um, <laughs> like a, like a, uh, I don't want to say ordinary, but like, like a, like a kid, you know, like, okay. you know, they didn't, okay. a lot of people put me, you know, when you're a PK, people put you on pestles because of, because of the lineage you come from. My parents yeah. didn't care about the lineage that they, that I came from. 
they cared wow. about my character and what you know they instilled in me as a child so like wow. uh, growing up as a pk from my parents they they loved me they they had flaws they had mess ups i had mess ups i had flaws um yeah. so growing up with them was was like i don't want to say normal but they you know those are my parents you know from the yeah. outside is where the pressure comes from and where the I guess the conf not conflict, but that's where the out so much stuff comes from, from, you know, people looking at you like you're supposed to be this, you're supposed to be that. Um, and so, you know, growing up as a PK, uh, you know, my dad made a lot of mistakes with uh, me and my siblings um, from being, okay. you know, being so busy. He did. This is transparent, you know, being, I'm just yep. being as real as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I, the first three, me, my sister, myself and my, my other younger sister, you know, he was kind of like building a church, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, he, he missed some things, some important things or whatever the case. So, yeah. um, so, you know, seeing my dad, uh, build the church to what he is now, and who he is, I saw him go through that. Um, wow. and so, uh, being a PK, I can, I can definitely say that, um, you know, I grew up as a normal kid, tr you know, that like my parents treated me, they, they wanted me to grow up, work, work hard, et cetera. But the outside from the church members in the public is where the interesting pedestals and perspectives yeah. come from. Yeah, no, I'm sure. So, so let me, let me, let me, let me dive in for a second and pivot on that. First, I think it's uh, one of my uh, mentors, uh, super like sage mentor, uh, Bishop Bryant, uh, shout out Bishop uh, John Bryant shared with me. Uh, he, he's, he's allowed me, you know, when, when I, when I call a text Bishop, he answers, appreciate you Bishop. Um, and, and one of the things he shared was something that, that you shared earlier. I, I came out from Empowerment Temple under his son, Pastor Jamal Bryant. Yeah. Um, but Bishop shared also, uh, that in the beginning of his ministry, like he was learning it. Right. And for people like, um, Bishop, uh, Brian and people like, uh, I'm sure Dr. Jenkins and others, uh, who are building these massive ministries, there's a balance between family and ministry. And sometimes it's hard to hit the right cue. Um, so yeah. I think that it, it's super cool that your dad has acknowledged that and then been able to obviously uh, make pivots and shifts. And I think for you, you know, we we, we talk and, you know, you uh, making making pivots and shifts with your family. Right. Kind of that. Like I, I never knew my dad. Right. So I didn't have that opportunity. But I also made pivots and shifts from that because I know now what I should be as a father, what I right. should be as a husband. Um, and so I think that's a bit, and it's, it is wild that you say that the congregation sometimes put that uh, preacher's kid pedestal. Because I remember my first, one of my first churches that I served at, uh, I won't name it, uh, but I remember the, the, the preacher's kid coming around. And I remember saying something, it was like basketball and, you know, I'm competitive. So I think I did something with the kid and he's like, yo, you can't do that. That's the pastor's kid. And I'm looking, you know, this is like before <laughs> you know, learn today. Uh, I was like, well, he's going to learn today. Like he's like, he's horrible. Like I'm crossing, hold me up. <laughs> like that's not a thing, but right. it was my first time being aware that yeah. that was a thing, you know what yeah. I mean? And it yeah. wasn't the pastor doing it. It was like another parishioner, like correcting me on how to treat the kid. Now, you know, long story short, the kid, I, I crushed him. Um, and then later on, <laughs> you ain't uh, even um, no mercy. Man. <laughs> no, man, I, I was too new for that. Um, and I'm glad I was. Uh, but later on, we, we became friends and, you know, he's he's doing he's actually a pastor in an AME church now and doing great things. But yeah. I just thought that that was so it, it's, it's key that you say that, because I think a lot of the times why we don't pivot and it's real, really what I was trying to get to it in your comment is we don't pivot the right way because we allow people from outside to influence what's really inside. Yeah, man. So yeah. I think that that's that's wild. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 No, I, uh, you know, the 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 most. Some of the most normal people are are, are preachers and pre preachers' kids. Like, yeah. like if you came over my parents' house or our family's house, you will see that we are normal people. Like, yeah. nobody runs around the house calling my dad Pastor Jenkins. Like, we don't call my dad <laughs> yeah. Pastor Jenkins. We don't call my mom First Lady yeah. Trina. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying like every you know. Yeah. So we're normal people. We have real issues. We have. Yeah. I had some real daddy issues, like you know, yeah. with my father and. Yeah. You know, like you said, you know, pivoting him, pivoting and realizing, you know, how where how he was, you know, building the church and maybe where some things that he messed up, you know, uh, and to to shift to to make that 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 turn to to make things right. My dad is a great he's my role model. My dad is I, I want to be him like 
That's and not right. not as not Pastor Jenkins. I'm talking about John Kenneth Jenkins Sr. That's I awesome. want to be him. I want That's like awesome. he's my hero. He's my yeah. hero. That's he's my awesome. hero. That's awesome. That's great. Now, so now, now let me let me also say. So I met you for the first time. Well, we met several times, but one time I met you, we were talking about a play we were doing, and we brought you in to kind of help us think through what that was going to look like. And then I realized that yo, like this dude got like a gift. So then I look and I'm like, and it's a, you, you never know this, but you find out now with everybody else. Uh, yeah. I was like, I was like, man, it's, that's cool. And then I started looking you up online. I was like, no, like this is not just what he can do, like. This dude like has has movies and plays like and shows and like scripts and like this is what he does. Like I was playing around joking and like he's looking at me like, yeah, dude, like this is what I do. <laughs> so, like, so, um, I, I, I thought it was super cool because you were also just super humble in it. Right. You were super like, yo, I want to help. And I, I, I get that from all that you do. And that, that's why I, I truly rock with you. I appreciate, um, you know, what I mean, what God is doing with you. But I do want to talk about that. Right. How you've uh a, a preacher's kid how you have gifts how you, you you have taught you preach i've seen you uh do that already but you have a gift for the arts right so i kind of i, I kind of want to talk about that pivot and kind of how because that's not a common pivot it's, it's something that we need in the church right yeah. but it's yeah. not a common thing that you hear people say that hey this is what i do like and this is what i can do so I, I want I want to pause. I don't want to lead too much in it. I kind of want to leave it open, but I, I do. I would love for you to kind of share about one of the many gifts you have being with the arts and and and, and how that kind of kind of flows with you. Yeah. So I I started doing man, I started doing plays like Lion King when Lion King came out when I was a kid. Like I don't know what it was about the movie Lion King, but it just sparked something in me. And I think we went to see like the ice capades i think it was on the ice capades it might have been lion king or something else i can't remember but i remember the movie lion king yeah. and that's kind of when i realized you know i had this like niche for like production because i was always infatuated like i would love to know what was going on behind what everybody was seeing and so um i grew up with a with doctor said with a learning disability um mm. uh i had I man i had so many d's add <laughs> adhd Really? I was dyslexic. Wow. I was, wow. you know, they were going to put me in special ed. Um, when wow. I was, you know, I was homeschooled all my life, all my life. Um, until the, I'm sorry, that's that is my assistant director of our of our young adult ministry. Amber, say hello. I'm in the middle of an inv- interview. What up, this Amber? Is, you made this it. You're on the pivot, Amber. Russ. It's cool. You're on real live right now. <laughs> you know? But um, so, um, so. Uh, I grew up with a with a learning disability, and yeah. um, my I was homeschooled all my life. So my parents, okay. my parents, uh, the doctors told my parents I would never be able to make it in like a regular classroom setting. So, wow. yeah. So I grew up thinking that I had a learning disability, and so one of the ways that I would express myself um, was through like being dramatic, <laughs> um, because I didn't think I could. You know, I would sit in my room and watch like I always wanted to know what it was like to get off the bus and stuff like that. So I would sit in my room and watch the kids get off the school bus because my parents, I just know I couldn't go there because of whatever reason. So anyway, okay. Okay. went through high school um, and I, I got to football kind of plugged me in a, a, a way to get me in high school. I went to Suitland High School and okay. it just started doing it extremely well, enrolled in their television production program and mm-hmm. went on to college. Uh, to uh, major in communications, broadcast journalism, and okay. film, and minor in theater. So I've been doing stage plays and productions for about now, about uh, 20 years. Um, and so, yeah, yeah I've, I mean, I've, I've been doing plays here at the church. I've done plays out of the church. Me and my brother, of course, you know, we have a movie called Sinners Wanted. Um, but that is a gift that God gave me. And, you know, I, I love it. I love doing it. Um, it has been a, a, a place where, you know, I, I think I best express myself in my script and my writings and when I'm performing. Um, That's good. And so, you know, I think, you know, that especially in ministry, you know, I, I haven't really done the secular side of it in a sense. Mm-hmm. I've always really kind of because I have a heart to see people changed and, and lives yeah. transform, transform, you know, for the glory yeah. of God. Um, yeah. So the, I, mean, I have done some so secular productions, but yeah, man, like. The, the arts and plays, movies, poetry, all that, like that's 
that's a heart. That's a that's a a passion of mine, and I love doing it. And I'm still doing it till this day. So, no, that's great. That's great. And I I don't I don't want to I don't want to jump over. I want I want to zoom in a little bit because what I what I heard you say, and those who are watching listening uh, again, it's going to be show notes. But what I what I heard you say, and then you jumped over the, the sinners wanted thing. You can't just jump like we know. Okay. But I need you to dial I, you know, in okay, okay, on, okay, how, okay. on how on, on how big a deal that is, and it was. So don't let's we're not going to do that. So we're going to go back to it in a second. But um, you said that they diagnosed you with something that was supposed to handicap you, yeah. but it didn't handicap you. It actually, from what I'm hearing, illuminated kind of who it, you oh, were I, and what you're able to be. I, talk about absolutely. that, because that, I, think, I think that's an important pivot that you made that other people need to hear about. So, so what happened was, and this is how it happened. God always, you know, man, boy, you about to, oh, don't look. If, if these things start to whelp up, dog, you better edit this out, okay? So look, but anyway, <laughs> okay. There, was a, there was a lady uh, when I went to Suitland High School, I, uh, I had to take a test because they were going to put me in special ed. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady who was the vice principal who was a member of our church. I had to go take a test. I took the test. I did really good on the test. The doctors okay. told my parents that the test was a fluke. That it just, I just, wow. my chance got, did well on the test and, uh, um, Dr. Porter, her name is Elizabeth Porter. She just recently passed uh, not long wow. ago. Um, but she told my parents, don't, you, don't do that. Don't believe wow. it. The yeah. boy is, he's fine. He's brilliant. Nothing's wrong with Josh. Give him wow. a shot. Give him wow. just a shot. Yeah. So they said, okay, we'll give him a shot, but they was going to put me in special ed. She wow. said, if you do that, they'll label him that for the rest of his life. He doesn't need to go in special ed. Wow. So they gave me a shot to go into, you know, regular, you know, with the comprehensive program with the regular students. And my first, yeah. my ninth grade year, I got 4.0s. That's what I'm saying. The whole ninth grade year. Then 10th grade, I went into the university program to get into TV production. Wow. I graduated student high school in like the top 5% of my class. I was in National Honor Society. And I'm not saying that yeah. to brag. I'm just saying that, that, no. that, yeah. that one opportunity that Miss if Miss Porter didn't tell my parents, just give me a shot. I probably would have been in somebody special ed thinking, you know, and, and, wow. and, you know, some people need special ed because, you know, it's not a bad yeah. thing. No, it's not at all. Not at all. Special ed is a bad thing, but it's just, yeah. it wasn't, I didn't need to be in special ed. Yeah. And so yeah. that, from that moment on in my life, I just felt that I would never allow somebody to define what I can do. That's good. That's good. You can't tell me what I can do. You don't That's you good. you don't get that not even a doctor. I'm sorry. I mean you listen to doctors or whatever the case may be, but God yeah. has the last say. So you know, you, yes. you listen to professionals and you get you take the information. Absolutely. Yeah. But God always has the last say. So uh that really kind of pushed me, even to this day. I still if, if anytime I feel down on myself or I'm like, man, I'm really not I'm not good enough or whatever the case, I just remember that shot. I, yeah. I had a shot. I had a shot and Miss Porter believed in it, and that kind of just catapulted me to kind of continue to keep on trying things you know that is awesome man i think i think I, I think that is that is so dope and so important for people to kind of hear uh if you're seeing you know to, to look but also just to know that you got to take your shot right and, and i think for me one of the things with this pivot we, josh and i were talking earlier uh before 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 we turned the cameras on and kind of went live that you know pivot was a shot right like it's 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 an opportunity to do something that's different, right? And 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 even when people label and say you can't, you know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. that's a major thing. So I'm, I appreciate you for, for being transparent enough to kind of share that with us, uh, but also just just for living it, right? Because I think that's, and, and I think, and, and what I'm thinking now is like, how many people do we discredit because wow. of what somebody has labeled them and not knowing that if we were the Miss Porters and we were able to pivot and tell them what screenplays, what, creations what things can kind of be out there um if we allowed them to pivot if we allowed them to pivot now now i say that to say and kind of my segue here you know i've been doing this for a little while i want you to talk about the center's wanted joint okay. uh, because that joint um I, I i remember seeing it i remember hearing it and then it, and then it, it kind of just took off and but but for those who don't know what is centers wanted where did it start at the church and then where did it go because that's that's that, that, that that's a major thing yes yeah, so, so thank you bro first off i appreciate it you know um i centers wanted was so i was a play guy i did stage plays really that was my that's my that's still my love my first love film is not really my 
that's my brother, Jimmy. That's his, he loves film. He got me to do film. I'm like, yeah. nah, man, I, I like the plays. I like the live, <laughs> you know, reactions from the crowd. I like the, you know, I like the, the intensity of, of the stage, but he convinced uh, me to, to write a script with him called Sinners Wanted. Um, yeah. It had, it went through multiple names, of course, but it's a movie um, that me and him, we worked on that script for about two years um, wow. before we, before we were able to get our, it was our first like featured budgeted film. Um, wow. we, we raised about $180,000 ourselves. Uh, we went like literally went, and, you know, at, we just went asking folks for money. Like for real, cut yeah. us a check, cut us a check. Like we can do yeah. this. And yeah. so since wanted, that's where it birthed. It birthed from um, a young lady who gave my brother the idea of doing the Hosea and Gomer story. And Jimmy was like, yo, we need to do, we got to write this. Yeah. And so we wrote it, took us two years. Um, and after the two years, uh, we were able to produce it. And once we produced it, um, we shot it here in D.C. It had Ramon, Lamont Rucker, Clifton Powell, the late Tracy Braxton, the rest of her soul. I love Aunt Tracy, uh, Roland Martin, um, um, Clifton Powell. I think I said his name already. But, you know, we were able to to get some real some some real live, you know, yeah. people can't act as yeah. enjoy, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And yeah, so yeah, yeah. uh we did it here in DC and then we premiered it at the church. It went really crazy at church. I mean we knew we were gonna get support from the church, but it was like crazy. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then after it left the church, we had it at the Magic Johnson Theater here and it like sold out. Like we had to add shows like I I promise like every weekend the yeah. theater was calling like, yo, like y'all are like packing out the biggest theater we have show after show, show after show. Amen. Amen. And we just kept on adding shows from there. Yeah. It went uh, to Atlanta. We premiered at different uh, film festivals and then it was originally picked up by TV one. And then yeah. after TV one, it's now actually on BET plus it's on Amazon prime, all that you, you can get it. there. So that's, it really started with a young lady who gave, my my brother the vision to do the Jose and Goma story, and that's how we we got it done. The story is it's a modern day Jose and Goma story about a pastor who falls in love with a prostitute, uh, to represent how Christ loves us in our nastiness and our filth, and yeah. uh, he's he's always welcoming to you to come back to him when you do stray away. So, um, so yeah, that that sinners wanted, and you know it's 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 i love i mean i still love it i watch the movie sometimes i see that like man like who wrote that line it's like you know it's like, <laughs> was, that, was that me you know what i'm saying so, yeah but but it was, a, cool. it was a great blessing to, to be able to do um and work with my brother on it as well that was also a yeah blessing for me. i'm sure i'm sure that's dope that's dope so yes yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna link uh all of the platforms for centers one in in, in 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 the show notes um, but that I was super proud of that. So, 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 so we talked through that pivot. So then, uh, there are two other pivots that I want to want to talk to because you, you know, this is kind of what you do. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I then, then start to, to during, during, during the middle of the pandemic, I, I start to pick up, uh, uh, cycling and think I'm doing something just a little bit. And then I, oh, I no, you doing some doc. Don't, don't, uh, to, do we need to dodge. talk about your averages? Cause you doing no, something. No, let's, let's not, let's not, let's not, <laughs> let's not do that. Let's not do that. Uh, on this kind, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about when I first started. So when I, I, I literally, um, in, in the middle of uh, the pandemic, had conversation with my wife and my coach, um, and kind of thinking through, man, I need something to kind of, you know, outlet. And so I said, pick up cycling. And so I grabbed cycling. I picked it up. You know what I mean? And when I picked it up, it was it was cool. Uh, then I, I ran into shout out Reverend Akil. Uh, I ran into to, to Josh. And and Josh was like, yo, I got this. I, I got I got this crew. Like you should kind of ride with us. And it's, it was and it's. And it's it, it, it's pushing pedals, right? And and it's it is a phenomenal family. Um, yeah. I think one of the one of the biggest things, Josh, that I appreciate about what you lead with them and all of the other pushing crew uh, is the fact that you all care about everybody and yeah. want everybody to grow from their first time. Yeah. Um, and and I, I super appreciate that. But I I do want you you to share a little bit about pushing pedals. Uh, and, and kind of the, the thought behind why that even happened. I know why it's needed, but I, yeah. I, I, I would love for you to share kind of the, the pivot into how you got there. So, of course, the pandemic, pushing pedals, shout out to the family, um, was birthed in the pandemic. Um, it started with me, I call him Scuba, Stephen Thompson and Anna Thompson. Um, yeah. 
the he's the vice he's our vice president and you know i didn't have anything to do during the, during the pandemic i'm like man what are we gonna do and he was like man get a bike so i'm like get a bike i'm like i ain't riding no bike he's like man what else you gonna do so i was like all right i'll get a bike so i got a hybrid and he had him and his wife had a road bike and i went out with them on the road one day and i'm pedaling hard as i don't know what i'm like man why y'all not pedaling as hard as i am and y'all going way faster than i'm going and they're like yeah. we got a road bike Long story short, I took the hybrid back the next day and got a road bike. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Post and cycle, you'll know you you know what I'm saying. Yep. Uh, so after um I got the road bike, we started riding, man. It, it grew from three people to like ten. Like we just started inviting all our friends. And what yeah. happened was there was a, a particular group. I'm not gonna say what this cruise what group's name this is, but I went to a ride. I went on. A, I went to. I was invited to a ride, and I was a beginning rider, Russ. You know, bro, you know what I'm about. You know where I'm going. To. I know where you're going. Okay, so I was a beginning rider, and I didn't have all the kits. You know, the tight kits and all that. I just had a road bike. I had my mesh shirt, my basketball shorts on, and I showed up to this ride. And I mean, people had ten thousand dollar bikes. They were like, mm. "Yeah, come, come to the ride, man. You be good. It's for everybody. You can come. You can come." And I went, I mean, everybody's kitted out from the top down. I got out my car. People are like looking at me, laughing. Like, I look out of place. Yeah. Nobody spoke to me. Nobody asked me, did I need help with my bike or pumping air in my tire or anything? Nobody did that. They just kind of like laughed and, you know, whatever the case. So I was just, I was, I was the only one there. I was invited by a friend of mine, but he ended up not showing up that day. So, anywho, long wow. story short, I didn't yeah. feel welcome. Yeah. I felt very intimidated. Yeah. Um, so when it got time to pull off, I let everybody pull off. I acted like I didn't care. Um, and then I got back in my car. Once everybody pulled off, I got back in my, put my bike in my back seat because I didn't have a bike rack at the time. And I went home. Wow. And wow. after I had that experience, I told Scuba, I said, yo, man, like, I'll never go there again. I said, I'll yeah. never go there. I said, because yeah. I just didn't feel welcome. I, I felt like I because I was new nobody welcomed me and i said man it would be dope if we could create something that made people feel welcome no matter what kind of bike they had no yeah. matter how experienced they were yeah. no matter what i want to create an experience where we can have community but you don't have to be an expert to to, to be a part yeah and that yeah. is where pushing pedals was birthed from that is the heart wow. of where pushing pedals was birthed from it was to be super inclusive it was to love on people you know, during the pandemic, we were so, you know, we couldn't be unified because everybody was separate. But riding bikes was one of the things you could do would be distance away from people, yeah. but still participate, you know. And so yeah. um, so that's where Pushing Pedals was birthed from. And it, we just grew. You know, the, our biggest thing is no rider left behind. Um, yeah. uh, we don't leave anybody um, ever, no matter if it's a fast yeah. ride or whatever. We don't. We just we don't because. God doesn't leave us. My goodness, I could preach that, Doc, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, Doc. But yeah. so that's where it birthed from, man. And you know, oh, we great. just started growing. We have all different types of riders in the in the you in the family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you know what yeah, it is. Like yeah, we yeah. we don't care. We you know we love everybody, and and yeah. you know so that that's where it was birthed from. You know. No, that that is great, and I am in the family, and I register automatically as soon as you say it's dropping i pay my membership for a year and and full transparency i only show up to the distance rides right uh, right i'm built a little different but i i want in because yeah. i know it sells out uh and so i'm going to put the link to pushing pedals on the bottom i encourage you to look for membership when we open back up um right. but i just think it's it's a super uh a great way to one, meet new people in a fun way, but to be quite honest, man, it is a super healthy thing to do. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you uh, the level of shape my body has been in since I started cycling. I mean, I do other mm -hmm. stuff too, but cycling just helps you um, yeah. and, 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 it, and it's super dope. So I, I appreciate you and Scoob and the family um, for that. But I think that's, a, and then you got some stuff. I don't know when you're going, you know, I know uh, this will air in a couple of weeks, but I know you, you know, you got partnerships now with people, you know, he's at a whole other level, ladies and gentlemen, No, uh, no. <laughs> he's on a whole other thing. He's signing, uh, uh, partnerships and stuff. You know, they got custom <laughs> kits and stuff. And uh, if you, if you don't know, if you, if you are in the site, you know, the kit is kind of what you wear, 
uh, in order to help you uh, uh, not necessarily be fast, but in order to help right. you be comfortable as you ride. Because right. riding for a long distance, that seat, that's your body ain't meant to sit on that seat yeah. like that. Yeah. But <laughs> if you don't, but and if you don't have a kit, you can that's still true. come. And See? and you know we do our pedal friendly once a month. And yep. you know we we make it. We go out of our way not to wear. We wear t-shirts. We wear we wear we will have the biker shirts and we wear t-shirts because one seeing people in kits can sometimes be a little intimidating and we True. there are people who don't have kids so we want to yeah. you know we want to welcome you in and then eventually like I, it took me a little i ended up getting a kid of course after that ride that i didn't have my kid and stuff like that yeah. but i had to learn you know somebody yeah. taught me and walked alongside me and then i yeah. developed and got better or stronger or whatever the case may be and so if you don't have a bike kit you can still come ride with, we ain't gonna make you feel weird or anything yeah. like that you know so yeah. it's all about love it's all about um relationship and you know right now like you said we've been getting a lot of attention from people and you know we have some sponsorships and partnerships and community things that we're going to be doing uh, within the community to make impact you know so yeah, yeah. y'all see i see how he, he slid it in like yeah we have some but it's cool i'm i'm gonna I'm, I'm go to the next pivot this is my guy i'm gonna go to the next pivot y'all, y'all see crazy, really bro. Bro. um but uh <laughs> but 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 so 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 we got the 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 script writing that I, I think that backstory is super dope um we we we're doing the push and pedals i think that's awesome uh and then you made another pivot and i'm like yo this dude here um and it's the it's trucking like it's literally transportation it's literally logistics um and 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 i shared this with you off camera that i I saw you do it and then i started seeing a lot of people who i also follow do it as well and i was like man i think josh is putting people on kind of helping people with the next level and the the way only way i can say it is next level of legacy for their Mm -hmm. family Mm -hmm. um so i want i want i want to stop down and talk about that pivot for for a moment so when uh the truck so yeah so we have a trucking company it's called gene king's transport um we have we have two trucks. We own two trucks, and we dispatch four trucks. Um, wow! And so uh, we got into it. Um, you know, how do I say this? You, you know, anything that I do, I always want to share the wealth. Like when I start, not share the just the wealth, but uh, I want to. Like Miss Por- what Miss Porter did for me was give me a shot. Like she kind of like said, yeah. "Look, just go try this. Like go out there, and you can do it." And so anything yeah. I do, uh, whether it's script writing, directing, you know, even my plays, you know, we, me and Anthony Brown do one of the biggest Christmas plays in the area every year here at First Baptist. You know, we're actually getting ready to do something major with that, whatever the case, but we want to get people who, those people who are in that play are people who who normally would not be, they're not professional actors and, you know, whatever the case, these are people who are just willing. So I, I try to push, always push to help people get to a place. If I've been through it, if I'm learning, I'm down yeah. to share it. And that's what I did with the yeah. trucks. Yeah. Me and my wife, um, my wife is, she was doing production when, before we got married because I was, but that's not really her thing, you know? Okay. So okay. we wanted to create something that I could possibly like hand down to my kids, you know what I'm saying? And then create yeah. with her and create yeah. with her. And yeah. so we, we uh, you know, trucking was something that everybody, like it was booming during the pandemic and a lot of people were kind of like getting into it or scared to get into it. And mm-hmm. you know, me and my wife pretty much said, "Look, let's let's try it. The only thing we could do is is succeed or fail." And you yeah. know, we had uh, some money to invest. We invested in it, and uh, we're we're doing. I mean, right now the industry is a little weird, but we're making it. Like we're doing we're doing yeah. good. And you know, I helped a, a, a few other people, um, you know, get into it. But it's really just me trying to help spark people to, if it's trucking or whatever it is. To take yeah. a shot, man. You gotta take a shot. You gotta, right. you gotta, you know. And, and you know, I, I know people say, "Man, how you doing it? How you do this? How you do this? How you do this?" And I just, you know, I, I believe anything is possible with with God. Like if God, God can do anything through you. And I don't ever think you should yeah. limit yourself to one thing. People always say they chase purpose or they want to know their purpose. They want to be in their purpose. But purpose is not a what. Purpose is a reason. It's a why. And so your why yeah. can change. Your why, I believe your why can change in different seasons and postures of life. So for me, this trucking thing was my kids. This is generational wealth. This is multiple streams of income that yeah. that we can that we can make. So that that was where trucking came from for me. Do I want to be a trucker? No. Do I want to drive trucks? <laughs> no. 
Mm-hmm. I did go get my CDL because if yeah. I'm going to do something, I need to learn how this joint operates because exactly. I'm paying somebody to do it. I need to yeah. invest myself to at least know how to do it, drive the truck or whatever the case in case I have to. But yeah, yeah so that that's what the trucking trucking thing was and is. We 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 are we my wife we just booked a couple of loads before I got on this <laughs> I got up. on this call. So that's but yeah, man, it's been it's been a blessing and it's something I just want to create legacy for my children you know what i'm saying not to just hand me down but you know my, one thing if i i know i'm rapping but I'm, let me say this oh, one thing good. my dad one thing my dad taught me man whenever i asked my dad when i was little can i have can i have can i have mm-hmm. he would always correct me and say how can you earn he would say how can you earn and i'm like dad That's can cool. i go to mcdonald's or can we go get mcdonald's he would say how can you earn mcdonald's how can you wow. earn those shoes and yeah. and he said that to me so much so much that i just that mentality in my mind is like, if I want generational wealth, I got to earn it. I got to build it. I got to go and do it. And I want to teach my kids the same thing. I want to teach, you know, my have my grandkids doing, this, you know, teaching those principles and the same thing. And this is something that me and my wife, shout out to my beautiful wife, my bride, Danielle Amen. Jenkins. Um, and it's been going good, man. It's been going good. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. I, I'm, I am, when I saw that one, I was like, yeah, man, this is, this, this is dope. Like I'm, I'm super excited uh, for Josh and what God is pouring into. And then when I saw the others um, who are popping up with with with, with their uh, trucking companies, man, I was just I was just super encouraged by it and thought uh, it, it was just super dope. So I, I think that's great. I think I, I, we, we wrap up now. Th- 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 those who are watching and listening again, uh, I'm going to put uh, the links. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one because the links for every different entity uh, that Joshua is a part of, I'm going to put it in the bio. <laughs> Uh, because he has so many of them uh, that I have to list them all. Uh, but I, I am. But I encourage you to kind of check them out. I encourage you to be inspired by it because I, I can tell you, I mean, bro, you're my friend, but I can tell you that I'm seeing it and I'm inspired by it. I'm like, yo, this is, you, this is this 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 is super great. And it's the same thing. People say, how can you do it all? Like the truth is, how can you not do it all? Right. right. How can you not allow yourself to be poured out into the ways that God has given you? knowing that God is going to refill it, right? I think the the tension is so many people never pour out. God never has a chance to refill. And Mm. I think that's the problem. You know what I mean? Like that's the, you're not pivoting. So you're not seeing anything different because you're not giving yourself out to be able to be refilled. And, Um, and you know, you you know, this, you know, this whole, you know, you have so many, so many of my family and friends and people who I look up to on this and, you know, the thing about pivoting, like, man, what you know, people don't a lot of times don't understand is, you know, I just never want to get so boxed in that I never pivot. Because when you pivot, wow. you gain momentum. Yeah. You gain yeah. momentum. Like, yeah. like there's certain things you can't do unless you pivot. Oh, my goodness. And I can preach this. I ain't going to preach it. But, <laughs> but there's only certain things you can do unless you pivot. That's good. And, That's and good. I think that pivoting is it's a way for you to even if you did made a bad move pivot so you yeah. can gain your balance gain your momentum to the to, to the next movement you know so yeah. it's that's just you know i i'm i am i'm also the young adult i'm the young adult pastor here at first baptist shout yeah. out to all the young adults here at first baptist yeah. and you know one thing that young adults you know 18 to 35 that's how we classify young adult what they're trying to figure out right now is like identity mm-hmm. and like and like purpose yeah and a lot of it is just because, you know, a lot of them are unaware because of the many directions and the, the, the things that are taught to us or, you know, the, the many things that they chase. Yeah. But all it takes is one good pivot. One good pivot. One good all it pivot. takes is one good pivot for That's you to, to get on the right track. And, yeah. you know, I mean, you'll yeah. always pivot, but just, yeah. Yeah. you know. No, that, that's good. That's good. So, man, as, as we wrap up, man, those who are watching and who are listening, uh, I, I want to to just 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 what are some like last words um resources things that kind of kind of get you motivated that 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 you you know books or people any anything that you kind of want to share on that as we as we close out um so i okay so i like to listen to people i i read slow um <laughs> i read slow but my go to book is the bible uh that sounds oh, churchy as i don't know yeah. what yeah, but it no, is. That's right. But, but that's it right. is. It yeah. is. It has everything yeah. in it that you need. Uh, um, but if not the Bible, um, um, there's a book called The One Thing. That One Thing. I can't mm. remember who it is by. I've read it multiple times. Um, 
I am I'm big on leadership. So you know, uh, John Maxwell is, yeah. is like my like you got leadership. You got to go yeah to all of his joints. The qualities of a great leader. Yeah. Um, I'm big on leadership. I'm big yeah. on develop, not just me being a leader, but developing leaders. Yeah. Um, I listen to, uh, uh, I have mentors that are great. Bobby Manning is one that I, I, I mean, oh, man. Bobby Manning is like, he's like, man, he's like, he's my bro, but he's a mentor of mine when it comes to like preaching the word and so forth. Amen. But he, yeah. inspi- he inspires me by being who he is. Um, Cause he has three boys. I have three boys, you know, whatever the case may be, he's yeah. in ministry. He's one yeah. of the people who I listen to. You uh, yeah. and Pivot. This is something that I listen to that I watch to Legend be motivated. Um, my dad, um, uh, Jeffrey Johnson. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking what? about some of my favorite preachers and so forth. But, but yeah. So th- those, I mean, you know, I mean, I listen yeah. to a lot of different podcasts too. But you know, I think yeah. uh, those are, I guess, just a couple people who I who I look to for motivation and inspiration. Um, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so I no, think that's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that, that's dope. That's dope. And I, I'm a, I'm a link uh, those on here for sure. Um, and, and I'm a link uh, some of the, some of their website stuff, man. But I think the, the biggest piece and, and the reason that question for me is important for everybody is because everybody needs to know, like none of us are, are, are I mean, we're inspired by God. So I, you know, the Bible, obviously, but we have to have other people who are sowing into us. Absolutely. Um, and whether you know them personally or you're hearing them or seeing them through podcasts and what they've created, you you have to. Because if you continue to look at what you have, all you're going to have is what you have. You're all you're you start have. looking at other stuff, you start being exposed. That's a whole nother thing. But man, Josh, man, I, I appreciate you being on Pivot uh, today, man. Uh, super, super thankful for you carving out time, man. And I, I'm super uh, just excited for all that God is doing, man, in your life. Uh, and I can't wait to see what the next thing is because uh, I keep on my phone scrolling like, oh, this dude did another thing. So I I'm, I'm, I appreciate these. But if I know you like I know you, uh, it's going to be something else. Um, just just say it. Just say it. Just say it. No, but I, I want to thank you uh, for having me on here, man. And, you know, even not just have, having me on here, but, you know, you, you know, there are a few people you get on platforms like this, you may not know the person. I, I've done a lot of podcasts and stuff like that, and moments like this with people, whatever. But uh, you are somebody who is genuine. You, you you text me out the blue like, man, I'm proud of you. You know, you do that yeah. a lot. You do that all the time. Like, man, you are killing it. Yeah. And just hearing that from you, you being like a real like he does that in real life. I could I was going to have it on my screenshot so I could show everybody <laughs> just our our text trail. So it would be yeah. funny. But yeah. you encourage me and you. You pour into me in ways you don't even know when I when I need it the most. So I, I thank you for even not just having me on here, but just what you do outside of here, uh, because you are a man of integrity, and you're even you are you are even greater to know personally. So I watch this, but I'm glad I know you personally. That God bless me with having your number, because I know a lot of people might want it, but they can't have it. Yeah, I'm not I'm I'm, I'm not putting it in the show notes, but bless you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I apologize, man. He, he's my little friend, man. So we, we, uh, <laughs> oh man, I'm not editing none of this out. No, no, let it in there, doc. Let it in there, bro. Let it in there. But man, I, I appreciate it, man. For real. Um, honest, appreciate it. Love you, bro. Um, super excited about all that God is doing, uh, in your life. And, and thank you all for, for getting on Ministry Pivot, whether you are again watching or listening. Uh, don't forget to download the show notes. Don't forget to follow us. Uh, on all of the platforms. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to share this with someone. Uh, big shout out to uh, my pastor, Pastor Watley, Kingdom Fellowship. Super excited. Thank you uh, for letting me serve in this way. And, and big shout out to one of my ministry partners, uh, Give Lafay. Always thankful uh, for you. But again, uh, looking forward to seeing you all next time. Don't forget that this is your season of opportunity. You just have to pivot toward it. God bless. 
Hey, I hope you were encouraged by that conversation uh, with Joshua and I. I am super excited about all uh, that God is doing that he spoke about. Don't forget uh, to go check out his uh, movie, his plays. Don't forget uh, to go check out his transportation company. Uh, and of course, don't forget uh, to come join Pushing Pedals. Uh, we be pushing. That's my man. Uh, super excited about uh, him and even the, the other things that are going to come out of his life. Don't forget to download uh, the show notes. All of the information will be there uh, for you to be able uh, to contact for you to be able to read some of those books, for you to be able uh, uh, to dig into some of the content uh, that, that we spoke about there. And of course, don't forget uh, to follow uh, Ministry Pivot on all of our social media aspects. Look forward uh, to seeing you uh, soon. Look forward uh, to seeing you as you move forward in your pivot, as you move forward in what God is calling you to do, because this is your season of opportunity. All of our ministry assets, just go ahead and follow them. God bless.